15 minute neighborhoods. That's something that I just heard off David Curtin, but it makes complete sense. Um, if you haven't heard of David Curtin, he is a gentleman who is part, or was part, I don't know if he still is, part of the London, London Assembly. He was the one that used to give um, Khan a right good grilling over his bullshit. Brilliant. And he set up the Heritage Party, which I think it's heritageparty.org, all right? So a lot of this video is in part of deciphering what he said and also what I know. Sorry about the wobbly phone. I'm off-road at the moment. So anyway, what does it mean? Well, it started out as a really great green idea, trying to encourage people to stay within 15 minutes of their household so that they wanted to reduce traffic within these localities. Uh, so obviously people weren't driving in and out. And if you go to David's video, that will explain more about it. But what, what does this mean for us going forward? Well, it's as simple as this. It's more control. Now, what I want to do is limit the amount of times that you can go out of that 15 uh, minute circle, whatever you call it, um, within a year. I think it's a hundred times a year, anything more than that, and you'll get fined. That's what they say at the moment. Now, this all started under the guise of pollution and being environmentally friendly and keeping down traffic within the area, making it all better place to live. Yeah, everybody would go along with that in some ways. I mean, just especially if you're some tree hugger, you'd love the idea. But think about the more draconian side to things and why they want to do it. Well, it's very simple. It's all about crowd control, population control, uh, control of movement. You've heard them say that you'll have nothing and you'll be happy. Well, part of the reason of making you lose your car is you simply won't be able to use it. So what would be the point in having it? Um, and when you do use it to go any further afield than say 15 minutes, you'll be punished. Now they're gonna put up the price of our insurance, our fuel, our tax, and everything else to do with the vehicle, the maintenance, okay? And they're gonna bring in more computers to limit that vehicle as to where it can, where it can't go, and monitor you in every which way. Now we all know that we've got CCTV just about everywhere at the moment and you've got smart motorways which will follow your number plate from point A to point B. That is unless you're a terrorist, at which point none of the cameras worked and there's no evidence. That's convenient. However, if you're a little Joe Blow, all right, and you're minding your own business and you've gone out of your area once too often, there'll be a fine and you will pay it because by the time that they want to set this out, which is about 2030, the social credit scoring system will be in place and you'll be punished, not just by the fine and by what it takes away from you, but by the family around you and the friends around you who are associated with you who will equally get punished. Because this idea that they're getting, they're getting from overseas, China I believe, but they're already trialing it in different places around the world. And they're going to trial a watered down version if you like and I think it's um, I want to say Canterbury but you'll have to see David's video for that well what they basically done is divided the the place up into four sections and if you're caught going outside that section over the allotted amount then you will be punished but let's think of this from the future because what they want to do is make these places a diverse area okay how are you going to do that exactly? Well, I know that at the moment you're flooding the country with a lot of undesirable people, but they are being put in place in hotels all the way around the UK, even into these tiny little areas where they've not seen any diversity at all. They now have a considerable concentration of people from outside the country right there. I have one up the road. Um, I live in a little village outside of Weston, and just up the road is um, a hotel ramp packed full of them. And you can see them waiting at the bus stop in either direction, and now you've seen them start to get a bit more lively and walking their way into places and stuff. And I have to say, if we're honest, they're about as welcome as thrashing a, uh, a gangbang, or worse. But that's the way it is, and you'll like it, and you'll be happy. Now, as David said in his video, the idea, which was quite a while back, was to close off parts of the community and that you would have everything you needed in that community so you wouldn't have any need to go outside. And part of the theory of this is to educate you that 
walking is a good thing and that if it's only ever 15 miles away, it might get you off your ass and walk. Well, I'm all for that. I'm also quite a realist that if you'd have gone back to say, for instance, the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, most people didn't actually very often go outside of the town or the village or the little area that they lived in. I mean, in Western Supermare, there was, you had Milton, then you had, World was just being built at the time. You had, on the areas just outside, you had Sam Bay, and then you had Uphill. And people generally stayed within their area because it was horseback. And when it wasn't horseback, it was push bike, and then people moved on to the car, but the road sections weren't particularly great. And if you were to do any mileage in the old days, it would be by train. Now, we had a great train network right up until the point that, well, they decided that they buy it off all of these little companies and then they went to the big four. Then the big four, because the, the war basically really took it out of the, 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 the railways, the big four got bought up and brought in. And then what they decided to do was close off the non-profitable. Um, this is where socialism would actually work. One of the rare occasions where you actually fund the non-profitable parts with the more profitable parts and the taxpayer does pay for it but what you end up with is a railway that you can use locally like all the little villages if you ask people who lived in Wales in the 60s one minute you can get to the village next door all of a sudden they're cut off they were given a bus well this bus would take an hour to do what the train would take 10 15 minutes to do and also couldn't operate in bad weather now going forward to now we're not going to be allowed there's the difference in the old days it was you can if you want but it might be a bit of a pain or it might take longer or it might cost more but these are all choices that's the key choices that you had that you could make the choices that we will have taken away from us because of reasons now the fact that the agenda whatever it is tells us that we're not going to have anything well I've got to be honest, if you're not allowed out, so you're a district nurse, you have to travel outside your section, how will that work? You, you'll get a pass for it, I assume, or will it be that bad that you'll only be able a district nurse in your particular area, and that's it, and you'll have to do it by walking. Now, going back many years ago, I was with a woman uh, who was a nurse and organized district nurses, and they used to drive quite a way out in their cars because you had some of them some of them did bloods they were called the vampires and then you did others that would go out and do the full air compression bandaging and whatever else all right there were quite a lot of syringe drivers in the morning and, and, and getting out of the diabetes now these people used to travel quite away but the only time they did very locally was when it snowed because they simply couldn't get out and about so they had to walk in it is this going to be the way forward for nurses now people like me as a lorry driver well, you can't be a lorry driver and not go outside your section, so I'm assuming I would have to get a pass. But what about me getting to work? Can I get a pass to get to work because the vehicle's nowhere near? Or is it a case of, well, you'll have to move to that section because we don't want you traveling? These are all good questions. But also, who the fuck are you to tell me where I can go? That's my bother. I don't like being told what to do. Never have, never will. My old man always used to say, because I said, I don't want to fucking pay tax. He said, we have to, we all have to. What makes you different? Because I fucking am. Not in those words, otherwise I wouldn't have a head on my shoulders. But I've always seen myself as different. And people will say, you arrogant bastard. And I'll say, yes, I am. Here's the difference between me and say somebody who goes along with doing what they want to do. Well, what they're doing what everybody else does. I'm not scared, you are. You're scared of what will happen if you get caught doing this. You're scared of being called out by other people because you're not conforming or you're, you're scared of this or you're scared of the other that's the truth of it no other reason makes you willingly hand over your taxpayer money now i have to pay tax or i get locked up i don't like it but that's the realism but there are many other things that have a lesser charge to it that i might say you know what fuck it and as things go forward and they take more and more of us you'll get to the point where you think i've got nothing to lose um, now, all of this CCTV, I've said for years, is not there to help us. If you think 
that these smart motorways were ever put into place because they were there to assist the flow of traffic and for our safety, you'd be fucking stupid. Yes, they can help. But in fairness, most of the time, they knock the speed limits up and down when there's no need to, simply to try and catch you out so they can nick you for speeding. Now, the do-gooders amongst you to say, you should be more observant. You know what? Sometimes when you're working 10 hours a day, or maybe a lorry driver that's working 15 hours, he's not driving all of those, but he's doing so many hours a week that he may make, once every now and again, the occasional mistake of being three or four mile an hour over the limit. That's all it takes. And then he gets nicked. Now the do-gooders would love that. But if you're a do-gooder, you're generally a cunt anyway. So there you go. Now, these smart motorways will watch wherever you go. So as I say, number plates are gonna be a problem. Now some of you might say, oh well, I'll go outside by 15 mile, whatever it is on a push bike. Do you remember they wanted to bring in number plates for that as well? But it'll be more than that. It'll track your mobile phone. Well, people will say, oh, that's fine, I'll leave a mobile phone at home. We'll be long past that, by the way. You'll have an implant or you'll be locked up. Is this starting to sound bad to you? Because a lot of us have known about this kind of shit for years and where they're heading. And most of the people in the past would say that the likes of David Icke and many other people like him were mental, because I did, all right? But I have to say, many of the things he come out with, I still question now, <clears throat> but there are a lot of things that he has been bang on the money with. Um, but this, the, the thing is with David Icke, he was coming up with stuff that nobody had ever heard of. Well, they're telling you, they're outwardly telling you what they're planning to do. And people are going, oh, they're coming out at the, moment, at the moment that there's vaccine damage, right? And there's people who are at work speaking to the non vax saying, you were right not to take it. We're all ill now. And the, the non vax person goes, right, but you're gonna have your next jab. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have my fifth. Are you fucking mental? You must be mental. If you knew something was bad for you, why would you do it? Now people might say, well, Rev, you drink. Yeah, there's a limited amount of damage and I don't drink all the fucking time, do I? And I, I roughly know what could happen with that. Now there's other people that smoke, and that's your choice. And I certainly wouldn't want to stop you smoking anywhere. And if I had my choice, I'd bring back smoking in all the public spots, at work, in the pubs, but I would have a room where you didn't smoke so you could eat. Make sense? Yeah. What they're gonna do is take away every freedom that your forefathers fought for. But you'll have an implant, by the way. Because as I say, if you don't have this implant, all of your freedoms that you know at the moment will be taken away from you. And obviously all of your family will be punished as well for knowing you've been related. So they'll come down on you hard as fuck. And literally the only place for people to not have this stuff would be literally living underground like something out of a fucking film we had in the 80s and the 90s. <clears throat> having an opinion, having a will, is going to be made illegal. It's only a matter of time. These people are gonna herd you like cattle. And most of you will go along with it because you don't have the guts to stand up for yourself. Now, if what I'm saying pisses you off, tough shit. Because you know who you are, They'll just go along with it because, oh well, I'll be dead by then. Great. Fine, you'll be dead. You'll probably be dead from an early death because of choices that you made because you thought you didn't have a choice. And you can work that out. But that's fine if you want to go and take these stupid decisions just for a bit of freedom here or a bit of freedom there. Do you remember you wanted to get out of a lockdown? Well, it turns out that the lockdown actually wouldn't have cured anything. And <clears throat> people like me were right for actually saying it's a load of bullshit. Do you remember these vaccines that you had so you could get out and would stop you getting it all? And now it turns out that they didn't actually stop anything really, but then the next vaccine's gonna be all right, yeah? And you'll take that, won't you? Hmm? And anybody who's had vaccine damage should just shush, because really, generally speaking, it's been all right. But it hasn't, but it has. Your mind must be so fucking confused. Honestly, you must, I, oh, I nearly come out with a joke, I shouldn't say that. You really are utterly, utterly confused, and yet, I mean, I'll say there are people that took these vaccines that feel that they are 
intelligent people because the worst thing we ever did to stupid people was tell them they're intelligent. The worst thing we did was send thick fucks to university and college that had no place being there and filling their head full of utter fucking spaghetti and then giving them the arrogance to believe that they were intelligent people and that they should put their opinions on others. These are the same mugs that have had endless vaccines that I was talking about a minute ago that believe that they are the clever ones and that us dumb fucking little Englanders are stupid. And yet they're the ones that are doing things that are unhealthy for them, asking for laws to come in that will take all their freedoms away. I mean, this is retardation on a biblical scale. These people are monumentally stupid and, and actually think they're intelligent. All they've got to do is literally regurgitate somebody else's wanky bullshit that makes no fucking sense at all and they're educated. It's amazing. The same wankers that'll tell you that if a fucking bloke's got a fucking cock, then he can have a baby. In the old days, they'd have been sectioned. Goodbye. There's a nice padded room, you fucking head. But not now. To have any sort of spirit in the future will be punished. You will be seen as a, what's the word? A maverick, a troublemaker, a thug, a hoodlum, a... A, a, a voice that needs to be crushed because you threaten the new world order and you will to, in the old days to be brave was to stand up get out of a trench and walk towards a machine gun if not a little fucking psychotic but they did not have any choice they did it because that was what is expected of them right now that generation themselves were brainwashed the poor bastards god bless them they were brainwashed to believe that going to fight that war was a just and honest thing and they were fighting tyranny. Truth is, there was tyranny on both sides, all right? Not that I say that <clears throat> Hitler or any of that lot were good, but our lot were never honest with us. And our lot sent good honest men to war as cannon fodder. And not just that, they sent men to jump out of a fucking trench to certain fucking death when they knew that. And our men bravely got out there and did it. And it's the same constant brainwashing that those poor boys had, that the brainwashing's now, that's telling people by doing something that harms you, you're doing everybody else a favor. It's amazing. Now, get back to this, this section business. If you go to the doctors now, is your doctor any good? Can you actually get in there, right? Well, that's all you're gonna have, right? But just imagine. Everything you need to be able to have has to be within that 15 uh, minutes or you're punished. But what about when the food shortages come in and your local shops haven't got it? Well, you can't keep going out. Well, so you're gonna have to get other people to go out on their credit to get you stuff because you've used your credit. Are you then gonna sell one of your credits to be able to go outside the village to a neighbor who's overused his so that you can get him something but then you use up one of your credits? What will a credit be worth? You see where I'm going here? The black market will go fucking mental. And many of you will look, literally just not have. You'll go without. Now the future is also that you won't need a laptop. You won't need a mobile phone. They decided this by the way. No, I mean the fact that they want us all to have battery cars but there's not enough cobalt, cobalt out there to do this. Um, they've worked out that they'd actually save a load by stopping you having a mobile device <clears throat> or a computer. And if you believe that, you're also a fucking idiot. No, what they want to do is blind you completely. You're not allowed to do any research of your own because, well, there'll be no books that have got rid of those, right? But you now won't be able to go onto the internet and research it because your credit tells you that you're not actually worthy of having a computer. You're not even worthy of having a phone. You are, however, worthy of having a TV at home that will broadcast the propaganda that your country, your section, whatever it is, wants you to believe. And you will watch it. Because by that time, they'll have a way of monitoring you, making sure that you do watch it and you do take it in. There'll probably be questions on it later on to make sure you were taking it on board. So not only will you have to be educated with lies, but you'll have to know the difference between those lies and the reality. That's learning twice, by the way. Most people won't be educated enough or bright enough or fucking have the wherewithal to actually work that one out. So we're gonna end up with a bunch of brainwashed cunts who will incidentally go out <clears throat> because they'll be told to. 
actively spying on people who may want to resist the situation and grass them up because that'll increase their credit system. What a fun future we've got. Now going back to these gutless cunts that go along with all of this and think, who cares, I'll be dead by then. Well, you've got kids, haven't you? No, obviously many of you didn't have kids because if you're one of these lefties, you would have been brainwashed into believing that having kids was a bad thing. Bad for the environment. Mm, well, not really, no, because that was actually your job as a human being to repopulate that. So the one thing you had to do, couldn't even do that. Anyway, however, they never told the really, um, well, the, the minorities coming over, which will turn into the majority, incidentally, because of this very reason. Now, there are people of BAME who were not told to do this. That was unless they were educated BAME. Are you seeing any of this yet? Because educated people are a threat, no matter what colour they are. So, yeah, it's just a wonderful, wonderful future that our kids will have because our generation were late waking up and were weak to react, and many won't. And as I say, some of the people that you know, love and trust will quite happily grass you up in the future to give themselves a little bit more freedom, because that's how it works. You can have a bit more freedom if you go out and find somebody who's taking freedom they shouldn't have. Now, if any of you think that I'm talking high in the sky stuff, I can't wait for you to find out the future, because it's going to happen, whether you like it or not. I mean, in the old days, we had to trust some bloke with vision. Now they just tell you what they're gonna do and that's it. And you still are fucking stupid enough not to believe what I'm saying. They're telling you they're doing it, right? So I'm getting it from them, all right? They've made big plans, they put it all out there. There's the World Economic Forum, there's the World Health Organization, there's the United Nations, there's the, who else is there? The, the Agenda 2030, there's fucking Klaus Schwab shit house. All of these groups are all working together to make this happen. It's happening all over the world as well. It's not one country. All of the countries are having it because how would you end up with a one world government if all countries aren't on board? Think about this now. All of this is happening. They're playing their part. All of these politicians have been bought and paid for, otherwise they won't be there, all right? Any other fringe politician who comes out and says he's against it will get nowhere at the moment. Future time might, but at the moment, they're not going to be given any airtime. They won't be given any, anything they do will be doused down. So, what, what would happen, hypothetically, in a film, right, with this happening? In said film, people would go out and start tearing down all of these cameras, every fucking one of them. They wouldn't take any of these things that go in your wrist, or if they did, or wherever it is, they would remove them. You've seen them in films before. Then what they would also do is they would make sure that anybody found grassing, right, would be punished because that's what happens in these films. What they'd also do in said film, right, is they would resist everything. Now, when you've blinded, because you don't have the phone with you anymore, right, <clears throat> there is no CCTV because every fucking living bit of CCTV that you could see in this film has been stripped, removed, taken down. You have literally, in one foul swoop, blinded the enemy. You would learn to talk away from any listening devices because it's not just going to be CCTV. There will be, eventually, like there was in Yugoslavia, there'll be speakers broadcasting the propaganda. And at the same time as them broadcasting the propaganda, there will be listening devices listening to subversive conversation. And these people will be removed. I mean, if you think I'm talking utter shit, think of it. It's happened how many times in the past? Look at Germany. The Nazis started to remove anybody who was grassed up for being against the idea. Look at Russia or communism. How many people did communism lift from the streets and murder? for being a subversive. So that happened all over the USSR, right? So it wasn't just in Russia itself, it was all the other states as well that happened in. Some were worse than others. China, nobody dead said a fucking thing in China, right? Um, so yeah, anywhere where there has been communism or fascism, 
take for instance, uh, where was it? I'm thinking about now. That was it, Argentina. Sting did a song about the missing, and I think it was about Argentina, but if it wasn't, there was a shed load of people that went missing in Argentina. They got rid of the <coughs> students who were speaking up. They got rid of revolutionaries. They got rid of people who wanted to stand against it. Anybody of any great thinking, they took away tortured to death and they were called the missing. And you weren't allowed to complain. Mothers lost their kids or the parents themselves went missing and the kids got fostered or re-adopted, whatever you want to call it. All of this has happened time and time and again and nobody has learned a damn thing from it. Well, this is what's going to come. This is why they're importing wholesale people who don't have any fucking clue about what's going on. I deal with these people that they're importing on a daily basis. <clears throat> I'll give you some idea of how slow they are. I've got to tell them what company I work for, right, and my name. I've had to write it down and show it to them every time I see them because I can't fucking work it out. Now these people, obviously from a different country and who look very different, will be easy to herd around because they haven't got the IQ to have a fucking clue what's going on, let alone get together and fight it. Now, the white race is actually, at the moment, a bad thing. Now, why is that? Well, and I'm saying the white race because I'm talking about how we're being persecuted in this country. The white race is generally quite bright, generally, okay? Even the thick ones, and there are a few of them, know how to do stupid things like, I don't know, they can work the bank out, they can, they can work a computer, they can drive a car, um, <clears throat> they can follow, generally speaking, orders, and they can work as a group. A lot of these people that bring it into this country cannot do some of the most rudimentary things that we take for granted. And that's a good thing, because part of their coming into this country is to be easily led and also to breed and I, I might be fucking wrong here but if you've got people of really low IQ that breed I'm not entirely convinced that they're going to bring a doctor into the world now that's facts I'm not being mean that is the way it is because we're not the brightest people in the world Generally speaking, if you were to look at what the most intelligent parts of the world, they're the, like the Chinese or the Japanese. They're quite a bit more intelligent than us. So it's not to say we're the best, not by any means. And when you look at Africa, there are parts of Africa that got 75 brake horsepower upstairs or less. So that's another part of the plan. <clears throat> but generally speaking, the 15 mile neighborhood will happen and it'll happen because they'll put it into place to begin with under global warming, the bullshit, and stopping pollution. Here's another thing. It's already happened if you look at it, really. You go into London, you have to pay. It's a punishment for pollution. Soon, they'll do the same thing in Bristol, which is why a lot of people are having to replace their older vehicles, like trucks for newer ones that are Euro 6 or above I believe whatever it is right <clears throat> it is one of the biggest financial blags of how to take all the profit out of everything and slowly but surely drive people off the road and it's gonna work but they have made sections there's the you've got the congestion charge which is one section. And then you've got the um, ultra low pollution, which is a slightly different section. They're already developing different sections that when you go into, you pay again. And this will happen in every city. And then when it's happened in the cities, they'll put it into the towns. Oh, we've got to keep the traffic down, pollution, it's doing this. And every one of these green wankers will fall for it, if they're still alive.
but it's not whether you fall for it or not. By then, you have a choice anyway. I mean, the illusion of democracy would have long since faded by then. And what it'll actually be is, um, by the way, I've got a really itchy nose. Don't get old, grey hairs. The illusion of democracy will have gone. It'll just be a dictatorship. This is what you're having. Be grateful we're letting you have that. And people will actually forget there was a time when we had so much more freedom. I mean, if you ever think you were born a free man, look into the straw man that is your birth certificate. You were never free, right? However, and by the way, type in birth certificate straw man on YouTube and see what comes up. It is interesting. Nobody's ever a free man because you have to abide by certain rules, otherwise you are punished by the government. And if you went back before, the king had his rules and other people made sure that those rules were adhered to. You've never been free. Well, not for as long as, I don't know, were cavemen actually free? I very much doubt it. I'm sure they had some sort of way of being run by other cavemen, who fuck knows. So yeah, the illusion of ever being a free man, <clears throat> no, but, there was a time when a man had a lot more freedoms than they do today. And we're gonna have infinitely more freedoms now than they will in the future. I hope you're prepared for this. Anyway, I've managed to do 31 fucking minutes. A couple of long videos today, but food for thought. Anyway, I'm gonna get off because I'm actually getting a sore throat for talking for 31 minutes flat. Ha! I'll see you in a bit.